Hello, this is Steve uh, St. Angelo, once again from the SRS Rock Report, and I'm glad you're here today because I'm going to discuss the big changes and massive cost shift in the gold mining industry. Now, this presentation is very important because some of the charts and information in this, in this video, I don't believe has been seen yet in the uh, gold mining industry or the, uh, the analysts have seen some of this information. It, it shows just how expensive it is to produce gold and why there is a floor now in the gold price. All right, let's get started. Now I focused this analysis on the top four gold miners. We can see we have Barrick, Newmont, Anglo Gold, Ashanti, and Gold Corp. Now even though Newmont produced a little bit more gold last year than Barrick, and I believe Kinross produced a little bit more gold than Gold Corp. So Kinross was the fourth largest last year. If we look over a five-year period, I did focus on these top four gold miners. And as we could see, from 2013 to 2017, Barrick produced 30.3 million ounces. Newmont came in second, produced 26.6. Anglo Gold was in third, 19.8 and Gold Corp was fourth at 14.4. Now, gold fields may have produced more gold, but uh, it's hard to get data from gold fields there in South uh, Africa, and I was able to access the information better from these gold mining companies, and they're a pretty good indicator of what's happening in the, in the gold mining industry. Now, this is a chart I've published before. It's by Gavin Mudd who was at the time in the Department of Engineering at Monash University in Australia. And it shows the falling ore grade of the top of these gold mining producers. Now, Australia was in yellow. And so in 1860, when Australia started producing gold, it was producing it at over 50 grams per ton. Now, an ounce of gold per ton is 32 grams. It's right here, about little more than 32 grams per ton. So it fell, you could see the average yield fell, but then as they brought, found new mines, it moved back up. And at the end of the 1800s, early 1900s, Australia was producing gold at an average ore grade of 25 grams per ton. That's a little bit more than let's say three quarters of an ounce of gold per ton. Brazil in red, we can see was doing the same thing. And then South Africa came on at the end of the 1800s, early 1900s. It was producing gold at 20 grams per ton. And then the United States and Canada came a little later on. And, but as we could see, the average gold uh, ore grade has continued to fall. And by in the 2000s, most of them were less than 5 grams per ton. Now, if we look at Barrick, which is the largest gold producer in the world, we can see a very interesting trend. Now, when Barrick was producing gold in 1998, they produced 3.2 million ounces of gold. Their average yield was 9.6. And most of this came from their Nevada operations, which I'll get into in a minute. But as they added more mines, their gold production increased, but we could see that their average yield fell as well. And in, in uh, 2006, Barrick peaked in gold production at 8.6 million, but they were producing it at an average yield of 1.71 grams per ton. Now, as Barrick's gold production steadily de declined, there, we could see that their average yield was going up and down. And then in 2014, we had the big sell-off in the gold price, 2013-14. At that point in time, Barrick had accumulated a lot of debt. And so to fortify its balance sheet, it started selling some of its uh, lower ore grade, higher cost marginal mines. And so we could see production has fallen off. But what they've done is by doing that, their average yield has gone back up. Now, in 2017, Barrick produced 5.3 million ounces of gold at an average yield of 1.68. And if we compare it back to 2001, we could see they're producing more gold at a much higher yield. Now, that does impact the, the price of production, and we'll get into that in a minute. But now, 
I can only get data for these top four gold mining companies about 2005. And so if we look at Barrick, Newmont, Gold Corp, and Anglo Gold, they processed 415 million tons of ore in 2005 at an average yield of 1.57. As we can see by 2009, they peaked. These four gold mining companies were they almost processed 541 million tons at an average yield of 1.19. But as we can see, as their processing of their, the total processed ore was about 500 million tons, we could see a, a, a continued falling in their average yield. But as the gold price fell, they started high grading. And as we can see in 2017, it's at 1.26 grams per ton while they processed 427 million tons of ore. Now, if we look at their gold production to their processed ore, we see a very interesting trend. These top four gold miners peaked in 2006 at 23.3 million ounces. This is their gold production per year. Now, even though they processed 540 1 million tons of ore in 2009, it didn't increase production. It was 21 million ounces. So the, ore, the amount of gold that these four gold mining com com companies have produced has continued to fall. But what's fascinating, they processed more ore, 427 tons of ore, to only produce 17.3 million ounces, where in 2005 they had to process 450 tons less, and they got 4 million ounces more. Now, I wanted to show you this again because I'm going to show you Barrick's cost of sales and how much of an increase their cost of sales are. So, again, in 1998, Barrick was producing 9.6 grams per ton, and now in 2007, it's 1.68. If we look at Barrick Nevada's Gold Strike and Cortez mines, now these are one of their most profitable mines. In 1998, Barrick produced 2.3 million ounces at their Gold Strike and Cortez mines in Nevada. Now, if we go back and look at their total production, it was 3.2. So what we can see, the majority of their gold came from their Nevada operations. Now, they processed 6 million tons of ore to get that 2.3 million ounces. Their average yield was over 12 grams per ton. Now, that's, that's a big amount. That's a very high-grade ore. But look what happened five years later. They had to process almost double the amount of ore, but their gold production fell to 2.1 million ounces. So their average yield went from 12 down to 5.63 grams per ton. In 2008, it fell again because we could see their gold production at Barrick's Gold Strike and Cortez Mines fell to 1.7 million ounces. Their average yield went to 4.6. Now, five years later, in 2013, we could see a very fascinating change. To produce more gold, like they were in 1998, Barrick processed 29.6 million tons of ore at an average yield of 2.3 grams per ton to produce 2.2 million ounces. Now, let's look at what happened last year. Their yield has increased because their tons of ore has fallen, but let's compare it to 1998. Barrick had to process almost 24 million tons of ore at their operations in Nevada to produce the same gold they did in 1998. So they had to process four times the amount of ore. Now, what does that look like? This chart here, and let's, let's look, pay attention to the right side first. This is the daily truckloads of ore, and I'm estimating at 300 tons of ore in a truck. In 1998, Barrick had to move 55 loads of ore to produce 2.3 million ounces. In 2017, 
they had to move 220 truckloads of ore per day to produce the same amount of gold. Now, if we look at this in a year, in 1998, Barracks uh, Nevada operations had to move approximately 20,000 loads of, uh, of ore. Now it's 80,000 loads. Again, four times the amount of ore. See, this is information you won't find anywhere else. And now this does impact the cost to produce gold. And this doesn't include, include the increasing oil price as well as inflation that's everywhere in the, in the costs like in their, uh, their materials they use, limestone, tires, uh, even the cost for labor has increased significantly in 20 years. Now, that has imp impacted the price to produce gold. Now, I've chosen 2005 to 2017 because it's about the same production. In 2005, Barrick produced 5.5 million ounces of gold. 2007, 17, last year they produced 5.3 million ounces of gold. Now, what's interesting, if we look at their uh, their, most of their costs. In 2005, their cost of sales at the mine, uh, this, this was 1,641 million, 1 1.6 billion. Their general and administration cost was 71 million, exploration evaluation 141 million, and their interest expense was 7 million for a total of 1.8 billion. So to produce the one point, uh, the 5.5 million ounces, Barrick spent 1.8 billion. Now that wasn't total costs; all taxes aren't included. But it just goes to show you, if we compare it to 2017, look at the tremendous increase in the red, and that's the cost of sales. Now, if we look at 2017, the cost of sales have jumped to 5,300 million, 5.3 billion. General and administration now are 248 million, they quadrupled. Expiration evaluation, it's 354 million, almost three times. Now here's the, this is the big increase. In 2005, Barrick was paying seven million a year of interest expense to service its debt. It's now paying a half a billion. 511 million. So the total of these costs are now 6.4 billion. This is what we, this is what is not seen by a lot of analysts. Uh, I would call superficial analysts uh, that are looking at saying that the gold price can easily fall to 750,400. Well, it can't because of the cost of production is so much higher now. Now, this chart I've done over the last 20 years is the top four gold miners, Barrick, Newmont, Anglo Gold, and Gold Corp. Gold Corp. The, their gold production and cost of sales. Now, the gold production is shown in the orange bar, gold color bar, the cost of sales are in the dollar. Again, now the cost of sales aren't all costs. They're not including, I'm sorry, all these other costs here, but it does give a good comparison of what's changed. Now, in 1998, these top four gold miners produced 14.3 million ounces. Their total cost of sales were 3.7 billion. By 2005, production increased to 21.2 million ounces, and their cost of sales more than double, almost doubled. But here's the big change. It's a big change has happened since 2005. Gold production at these top four miners has fallen to 17.3. It's about 3 million ounces more, but look at total cost of sales. It's ballooned to 17 billion. Now, if you look at the cost of sales by taking total cost of sales and dividing it into the total production. In 1998, it was 263 an ounce. 2005, it increased to 331. And in 2017, it was 985. It's almost quadrupled since 1998. Again, cost of sales do not include all costs, but we could see it's costing so much more now to produce gold 
in these top four gold miners than it was in 1998. Now, I want to talk about capital expenditures. And the reason I want to talk about capital expenditures because there are three different statements, important statements that are released in the gold mining company's uh, financial statements. We've got net income, and that is where cost of sales are. Net income shows cost of sales. Then we have their, uh, their uh, cash flow statement, which shows capital expenditures and cash flow. And then we have their balance sheet, which lists their assets and liabilities. Now, what's interesting in the gold mining industry, and I've read reports that they're trying to, the gold mining industry has taken certain costs now and place them as capital expenditures. Capital expenditures are not listed on the net income statement. And that's where you see a net income gain, net income loss. Capital expenditures are not included in the net income. So we have to look at the capital expenditures because they're very important and they've changed. For example, this is Gold Corp sustaining capital expenditures. This does not include their expansionary capital expenditures. Gold Corp spent $576 million last year on sustaining capital expenditures. Now that is not included in their net income. Sustaining capital expenditures can include, but are not limited to, capitalized stripping costs at the mines. When the mine, when the, when the uh, company moves into different areas of the open pit mine, there's a lot of oven burden that they have to remove. They also have to build new access roads. It's very expensive. This is not, this cost is not included in their cost of sales. It is put in their capital expenditures. Also, underground mining development, mining and milling equipment, and tailings dam raises. All of this is put in their capital expenditures, and it's only for sustaining. So it's important that we look at the gold miners' capital expenditures and their free cash flow because I believe it gives a much clearer and better indicator of what's happening in the gold mining industry than their net income. Now, these charts come from Guru Focus. This is over a 15-year period. It's cash flow from operations. And then we, we, we uh, subtract their capital expenditures, and we come up with their free cash flow. And this is Newmont. And as we can see, if it's in black, it's positive. Red, it's negative. Newmont had more years of positive and less years of negative. Now, if you look at Anglo Gold, we see a lot more red. Now, the next chart, I took 20 years of their free cash flow and I added them up together to get a net free cash flow. From 1998 to 2017, Newmont enjoyed 6,928 million, 6.9 billion in positive free cash flow. Anglo Gold came in second, 468. This is what was fascinating. Barrick, third at 110 million. Even though Barrick was the largest producer, Barrick had some very troubling years because of uh, getting into uh, investing into mines that were very problematic. It impacted their their capital expenditures and their free cash flow. But still, over that 20 year period. Barrick enjoyed only 110 million in positive free cash flow. Gold Corp actually lost 15 million. Now, this next chart, which I don't believe has been seen in the gold mining industry or in the analyst community, if we look over 20 years, these four companies enjoyed 7,490 million in net free cash flow. Let's call it 7.5 billion. They produced a total of 391 million ounces. That's a lot of gold over the 20 year period. Now what's interesting, the average gold price, if we average them up over the last 20 years is $832. Guess what the net free cash flow per ounce was from these top four gold miners, $19. 
$19 an ounce. That's how much they made over how much capital they spent. Now, I decided to look at the top eight gold miners. We've got Newmont, Goldfields, Anglo Gold, Newcrest, Barrick, Gold Corp, Kinross, and Agnico Eagle. As I mentioned, New, Newmont had $6.9 billion in positive free cash flow. Goldfields actually came in second at $1.3 billion. Anglo Gold, 468, Newcrest, 154, Barrick was 110. But now here, this is the red. Gold Corp had negative 15 million in free cash flow. Kinross had 231 million of negative free cash flow. And the, and the loser of the bunch was Agnico Eagle. They spent a billion more in capital expenditures than they made from operations. Now, Gold Corp and Agnico Eagle are newer gold miners. And so they spend more capital in the beginning. But if we look at a net of all these together, it's $7.7 billion. That's it. Now, I don't have all, I can't compare what that is for all the production from these miners because it would have took a lot of research to find out what their gold production was over the last 20-year period. But it's only $7.7 billion from the top eight when it was $7.5 billion from the top four, and Newmont was the largest, was, the, was where most of that free cash, positive free cash flow came from. So what we could see is that the gold miners have spent a lot of capital to produce gold, and they haven't made a lot of positive free cash flow. Matter of fact, if we were just to take out Newmont, it would be, and we could take gold fields up to Agnico Eagle, it would be almost zero flat. Now, this is a very important chart because it shows the top four gold mining companies' gold reserves, and it's in million ounces. 2002, the top three, because Gold Corp just started adding in, in 2004, we have Barrick in the dark brown, Newmont in the orange, Anglo Gold in the gold color, and then Gold Corp is in, on top in the lighter. Gold Corp started adding a lot of reserves, but they all peaked in 2012. And that's partly due to the price. But this is what's interesting. In 2002, the gold price was 310. And these top four gold miners had 246 million ounces of gold reserves. It peaked in 2012 at 381. And now in 2017, it's dropped to 236, but the gold price is four times higher. You would think a higher gold price, they would have higher reserves. But the problem is there just aren't a lot of good reserves left. And I believe we are in peak gold production. And we're likely going to see gold production decline significantly, even if the gold price increases because of the problem with oil production and energy. Now, I want to come back and look at this chart again, because the problem is the gold mining companies are not spending the capital expenditures. They, 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 they're not spending the money they need to, to increase gold production. And the reason for it is they're not, as we've seen going back here, they're not making a lot of positive free cash flow. So to see such a tremendous increase in the cost of sales from 3.7 billion in 1998 to 17 billion in 2017, and the gold production has only increased 3 million ounces, it's costing so much more to produce gold today. So I don't see the gold price falling to 750 or 400. It, it's just too expensive. The cost to produce things are the floor in the gold price. So I want to conclude by saying this, the big changes in the gold mining industry is it's taking so much more to produce gold than it did 20 years ago. And if you remember this chart here, I showed you the truckloads. We're just moving so much more ore. There's so much more equipment that needs to be purchased. 
the, the tires on these trucks are so expensive. They're, they're, they're up to thirty, forty, fifty thousand dollars a piece for these tires. And they go through a set of tires a year. And then when you're adding four times the amount of ore that has to be moved at, at barracks, uh, Nevada operations, it just costs a lot more money. So when the markets start to correct, and I believe we're going to start seeing that this year, if not, it will have to be 2019. There's just way too much margin debt and leverage in the system. We probably will see a correction in the gold price spike lower, but as the markets really fall apart, we're going to see a lot of investors move into gold like we've never seen before at a time when gold production is peaking. So I wanted to thank you for checking out my newest video. And uh, if you haven't, please consider subscribing to the SRS Rock Report YouTube channel. And I hope you all have a nice day.